We're going to start our Manda Sunrise off just like any other tequila sunrise. Let's get some grenadine. As per usual, a little bit goes a long way, so we're just gonna coat the bottom there. My goal is to match this color as plenty. I normally like to use very specific ratios, but here I'm just going for some color matching. I'm gonna pour this in until it looks about right to me. Mix it up. Maybe a tad more grenadine. There we go. Mix it up. Works for me. Carefully get some ice in here. Next we'll want a shot of some green melon liqueur. I recommend refrigerating it first, that'll help it sink. Pour that shot right onto the ice. Watch it sink to the bottom. Ta -da. So we have our main body color here. We've got our green spray here. Now we just need our gold. So last but not least, we're going to use some gold tequila. I've already set aside some here and I've already added some gold luster dust. If you want to see how that works, you can look at the Zigra Margarita video. This doesn't look shimmery at all because I've let this sit for quite a while. You can see there's some sediment at the bottom and there's a little bit of film at the top, but once you shake it up, then we get our swirls. Let's get our shot of this guy, float that guy across the top. It should be nice and gold right on top. If you want to do it in the margarita glass, that also works. So much more surface area. There we go. Now in a perfect world, I have the exact same layers as the figure. So this would be on bottom, then you'd have the layer of green, then the gold. But all the alcohol would be floating on top, and that's just too much. Additionally, if you want to mix it up, you're more than welcome to. It's delicious, but the problem is it looks like Oh, God. Start by turning this guy 180 degrees. Here we have our Marmot Monster Heaven Final Wars Manda figure. This guy is one of only, what, three figures ever released of it. You've got this guy, you've got the Bondi Candy figure, which just dwarfs in comparison. You've got the cast mini ornament statue. I don't know if that would count as a figure. Up to you how you classify that stuff. I think there are also a few other resin model kits, but as far as representation, this guy does not have a lot. Cast in this orangish reddish vinyl, it has this yellow spray that starts on his neck, goes all the way down his belly. Gets a little lighter as it gets to the end of the tail there. The top has this metallic greenish teal, covers his entire head, all the way down his back, down to the tail, and on the backs of the arms and legs. On top of that, we have gold highlights on the horns and spikes down the back, all the way down to the tip of the tail. Final paint apps are these silver teeth, red eyes with black pupils. The horns are cast as separate pieces, but they are glued into the head. This guy features seven points of articulation. First, the head can turn all the way around. Second, the base of the neck, which can also turn all the way around. Third and fourth are the arms. They can turn about that far and about this far. I don't want to push it. I don't want to break this guy. Can go up to about here and back to about there. Fifth is the waist. That can turn all the way around. Sixth and seventh are the back two legs. Can go up to here and back to here. This one, for me, can go all the way around. You might notice there's one more joint here in the tail, but that is glued together. Do not try to turn that one, it's not gonna happen. And you may notice, just like all other vinyl figures, it has that little notch that's built in to every articulation point. It doesn't bug me as much here as it does on something like Movie Monster Series Space Godzilla with the spines, that's terrible. This is pretty decent. The back feet are in more of a standing or walking position, but the front arms are into more of this grabbing or holding. There you go. Oh yeah. Now aside from the paint jobs being drastically different, the candy figure has these, what would you call these, tendrils? Antenna wings it has the front ones and the back ones, whereas on the marmot, they're sculpted in. It starts here and then works its way back. It's completely unpainted down here and then the same spray as the back. The back ones, down here, and then go all the way onto this other section. And you can see both of them there. As with most marmots, this guy came in a bag with a header card. This one has the 2006 gold sticker. Now did, did Trendmasters start this, or did they get this from uh, other Japanese companies? Either way, I, I love it. I love when they do these. There you go, on the back, Manda. Now I did notice, for those of you who have the M1 Manda from 2007-2008, the 1968 68 version? 
please correct me if I'm wrong, you might notice it's the same color vinyl and just about the exact same paint scheme as well. The price of this guy, like most marmots, has skyrocketed over the last, what, 14, 15 years? I should probably not have this guy near alcohol. I like this guy. He doesn't scale well with any of the other Bondi's or other Final Wars figures that I do have. Sadly, this guy fits my collection as far as scale goes so much better. This guy's a great figure, don't get me wrong, but if they ever come out with a Monster Arts version of it, I would sell this guy in a heartbeat. If you're looking for this guy, check the usual sites, check eBay, check Mandarake. Good luck on your hunt trying to find this guy, but until then, please drink responsibly.